this week on the spotlight. It could be our last interview with Robin Ventura. We'll see. Then we talk to Todd Frazier. Oh, we'll talk to him plenty. He's trying to get to 40 home runs. That's cool. And we go to the Bulls thing. And Dwayne Wade having a good time. He's answering my question. And then the big guy, John Paxson. He's the boss this week. Check out my website, Benkowski.com, for my weekly article and up-to-the-minute trivia sites. Welcome to the Perfect Pitch Auto Repair Sports Spotlight. They do it all at 108th and Kedzie. Flowers for every imaginable occasion at Lansing Floral Shop. Call them at 708-474-1212. They deliver. You've got to get to Sheffield's for my trivia game. Wednesday, October 5th at 7.30 p.m. in Dyer, Indiana. It's a great fun. They have great food, great drink, great everything at Sheffield's. And my trivia game coming up. See you there. Family Dentist, Lawrence Ferlin, E is the Dentist, 109th and Kedzie, Crowns and Ears, Cleanings and More. With a 30-year Southwest Side tradition, Huckfin is open 24 hours to serve you with great breakfasts like the Becky Thatcher, soups, great lunches, one-third pound burgers, clubs, and much more, dinners from seafood to steaks to pasta, great donuts, and ice creams. With three locations at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero. Stop in today. You know Huck Finn is open. You've got to get to Dr. Sherman Clay, chiropractor. Gentle adjusting. Most insurance accepted. Massage therapy, too. Walk-ins are welcome. Call 773-324-4325. That's HEAL. Dr. Sherman Clay. You've got to get to Snappers Seafood and Chicken, new to Chicagoland from Florida. Tilapia, perch, catfish, shrimp, conch from the Miami Connection, crab, Philly steak, grilled food, and much more at 115th and Western. See you at Snappers. You've got to get to Shelton Fireworks, the world's largest warehouse, off Interstate 94, exit 22B in Porter, Indiana. Row after row of the best fireworks anywhere. From the little ones to the grand finales that'll end your show. Birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, in addition to the 4th of July, just get over there to Shelton Fireworks now. Then you can reload by the time summer comes. Shelton Fireworks, I-94, exit 22B in Portage. Well, for maybe a week, there'll be two Robins in town. Robin Lopez of the Bulls and Robin Ventura of the White Sox, but I'm afraid Mr. Uh, White Sox manager is in his final days as I stand here, and by the time you see this, there will be very little left of the White Sox season. It's been five long years. Nothing got accomplished. And um, when you don't get anything accomplished, you don't usually stay on a job like this. So here's Robin Ventura's final words on our show for maybe a long, long time, if not ever. Adam said, um, a couple other guys I talked to also said that if they came back with this same exact team next year, <clears throat> that they believe it could be a much better result. Um, do you, you feel that way as well, that uh, there's enough talent in here with what you've had this year for it to be better if they came back as a group? Well, I mean, now that you're looking at it, you have a, a, a different roster than you're starting with. You, I mean, when you end it, you, you now have TA the whole year. Um, I, I think even the way Frazier has been swinging it as of late, um, you know, it, it's, it's a better looking lineup than, um, than probably what we left with. And, you know, it, it's a possibility. I, I think, you know, there, there's some talented guys in there that didn't have, you know, their, their normal year or the numbers that you would like. And, you know, you like guys that, that think that way. In those middle months, what, whatever did happen, what, what did you learn from that? Did, can you pull from that and, 
and apply late, at, at a later time. Well, I think you learn how uh, guys struggle and, and how they try and get out of it. I think that's the biggest thing is uh, you see guys that are continuing to, to grind through it and, and try and find it. And, you know, some guys find it quicker than other guys. And I, I think the, the biggest thing is just their um, their ability to grind through it and, and not quit on it. But in the same time, it, from from the manager's point of view, it, it could could you have maybe hastened the situation by by sitting people down when they were at their greatest point of struggle? Yeah, you could. Yeah, absolutely, you could probably do that, and that's a possibility. I mean, we you can look back at it now and and say that. So yeah, that's a possibility. If Sale wins today, he'll match his career high in wins for a season. Uh, we've talked a lot about how the numbers may not necessarily reflect how well he's pitched this season, but just so that he gets that, okay, now he's matched his career high, what would that say about him? Well, it, you're looking at a guy that's one of the elite pitchers in the game, and you always want him to, uh, you know, match or best his, you know, past performances, and I think part of that is his motivation at this point to be able to go out there and do it. And his numbers, you know, again, we've looked at them and they stack up with anybody. Uh, but you, you want him to continue to win games and you want him to surpass previous, uh, you know, accomplishments or, or whatever his record was. And every guy is trying to do that. Have you seen him grow as a player and as a teammate this year through some you know, bizarre times. Yeah, yeah. There's been some. We've had some fun ones, and you know, again, he's he's grown up uh, here, and and now he's, you know, you're looking at him as, as the guy that for the staff has been here the longest, um, and I, I think that's part of growing up, and and uh, you know, he he's the the lead guy and the anchor, and, and you learn how to do things uh, a different way, and you know, you grow through that, and I think he has. Have you, what have you learned from your? relationship with him dealing with him because it hasn't always been a better roses but you always feel his passion one way or the other Look, I mean you know I, I think some of it gets blown out of proportion but um, you know him and I you, you, we have frank conversations and I think that's part of, of having a healthy relationship that you can say what you want to say um, but at the end of the day we know we're we're pulling for the same things and, and he's competing doing what he needs to do and you know, I, we still have a, uh, a relationship where we can do that. We can be honest and, and upfront with each other. As you close, players, pitchers of that caliber have that type of attitude, have that type of mindset, and that's why they're successful. Yeah, he's talented too. I mean, I, you know, the, the biggest thing is you have to have the talent. Uh, there's a lot of guys that uh, have attitudes that don't have the talent, but I think when you combine those together, you know, you end up with with somebody that's like him and, and you know, kind of is one of the better guys in the league. And it's one thing to have talent, but if you don't have the drive that he has, it, you know, doesn't get you very far. As you close out the season and you're not playing other contenders, you can maybe do some fun things. Have you thought about doing something wild with the lineup in one of these final games? Um, not yet. I haven't, I haven't, you know, done that just yet. There's some guys that uh, are still, you know, looking for their personal things and, and you want to make sure you're, you're respectful of that and uh, they want to finish it out hard but you know there might be something that comes up that uh, that we might do. Steve Lyons moment? Or? No he's going to play all nine positions. I know that. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would say I would say was already at a career high in Indians. Is, is that something you have to keep an eye on at all or you, he's, he's good to go today? He's good to go today. You know it, it, you're looking at a guy that uh, he, he would let you know if, if he, he wasn't able to do that and and, um, you know, he's, he's ready to go. Do you think this will be the last one, or you haven't, they haven't, they haven't, they haven't, we haven't decided that yet? I mean, we'll see how this one goes, and then, and then you can, you know, you can make a judgment after this one. Thank you. You've got to get to Lansing Floral Shop. Open at 8 a.m. daily. Besides a great array of live flowers, they have custom silks, Bridgewater candles. They want you to plan your parties early at a wide delivery area. They're located at 3420 Ridge Road in Lansing, or you can call 708-474-1212. Weddings, funerals, birthdays, anniversaries, and guys, try the No Reason Flower. Believe me, it works. Lansing Floral Shop. Give them a call, 708-474-1212. Kim G. Sherman, psychotherapist, Displains Wellness Center. Therapy for individuals, couples, families. 
call 847-962-4849. I've known Kim for over 20 years. She is a true professional, and she will help you. Give her a call. Family Dentist, Lawrence Furland, DDS, 109th and Kedzie, crowns, veneers, cleanings, improving your smile. They do a great job. Call 773-233-7044. Excellent work. Impeccable. Call the family dentist. 773-233-7044. They did a great job for me, and they'll do a great job for you. You've got to get to Shelton Fireworks, the world's largest warehouse, off Interstate 94, exit 22B in Porter, Indiana. Row after row of the best fireworks anywhere, from the little ones to the grand finales that'll end your show. Birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, in addition to the 4th of July, just get over there to Shelton Fireworks now. Then you can reload by the time summer comes. Shelton Fireworks, I-94, exit 22B in Portage. So the 2016-17 bull season has begun. I'm reluctant to tell you how many years I've been coming to these things, so I won't. But it's over 30. We start off the proceedings with the uh, front office tandem of, I call it Pax Gar. Some people say Gar Pax. But I've known John Paxson a lot longer. Going back to 1985. So that might be a little clue about uh, my history with the bulls. Uh, in fact, I do ask him about the Bulls of the 80s when he played, and uh, he'll talk about that and a few other things. So here's uh, element one of Pax Gar talking to the press about 2016-17 Bulls. Uh, just uh, before we open up the question, I'm going to make a few brief remarks. Um, if you recall last year when the season ended, Gar and I sat in front of you and talked to uh, about the season um, and we also mentioned how we expected there to be changes and obviously we've made a lot of changes. Uh, we have eight new faces on this roster. We, uh, when we look at this roster right now, we, we, I think we're all encouraged by the, the blend we have in terms of our vets and the young guys that we, we, we have on our team. And you know, we brought in two guys in Dwayne and Rajan who have championship experience. Uh, we brought in a high-quality starting center in Robin Lopez. Um, then we have two holdovers in that, that regard in terms of Taj and Jimmy. Taj, just the ultimate pro, and Jimmy, who's two-time All-Star, been our best player. So th those five are, are going to be the heart and soul of our team, but we, we think that with their leadership, our young guys are going to have an opportunity to blossom and grow as players this year. Um, we also made some significant changes in our training staff. Uh, we had a Chip Schaefer. Uh, who is running up our sports performance area. Chips uh, was my trainer when I played. Uh, he's done a little bit of everything. Uh, we think his knowledge and expertise are going to benefit us in that area. And we hired Mike Orr, who is a physical therapist. Again, a lot of what we're trying to do is injury prevention, those type of things. So not just the player changes, but some of the, the training staff changes uh, we made. Um, when Gar and I spoke in April, uh, you know, we made it clear that we had certain expectations of our players and our staff, and uh, we are we feel really good given what both our coaching staff and our players have done this summer. Our young guys were in this building and and working hard every day. Our vets are pros; they know how to work, how to get their bodies in shape, and the vibe that's with this group right now is is really a positive. So, um, we're we're encouraged we're encouraged by that, and I, I think ultimately the the expectation we gave to them at that time was that they have to be professional in their approach every day. Uh, there's going to be accountability to everything that they do uh, and that if we're going to have any success uh, in any way, it's going to come from us being together and giving great effort as a unit. So um, that's, uh, that's really what, uh, what we had focused on and, and we're, we're, we're really excited about the possibilities that are in front of us. And it's the great thing about a new season starting and putting a, together a, a team. It's all out, out there in front of us, and for, for Gar and myself and our coaches uh, and the players, it's, it's, it's obviously an exciting time. So with that said, uh, we'll open it up to some questions. Uh, for John, Cody Westrell with 670 to score. How big of a difference can Dwayne Wade's leadership make this season and just the thought process behind adding him? 
Well, I, I think both of us can speak to that. Uh, uh, I think any time you have championship experience in your locker room, especially at a, a level where a guy has been MVP caliber, I think that carries a lot of weight. And uh, we've been, both Rajan and Dwayne, we've been... Really well, I, I think you can see it already in our building this month when our guys have been in the building. Uh, just the way they interact with the players, the way they lead on the floor, uh, that kind of thing. We talked about in the spring, one of the things we talked about was getting younger, and we've gotten significantly younger with 10 players now with three years or less experience. I think we have 12 players that are 27 or younger. And in doing that, you still want to create a culture uh, that's conducive to what John mentioned, the professionalism, the team-first attitude, um, some of those things, those intangibles that are so important. And I think having that type of veteran experience around your young guys is critical as we go through this phase where we were changing over the roster. And uh, that, to me, that's what the veterans bring. And, and, you know, you include, like John said, Jimmy and Taj in that. But, but Dwayne and Rajan have been incredible. Uh, Rajan has been here for a big part of the summer, and um, uh, again, just the way he interacts with his teammates, uh, the, the, the work ethic, he's in terrific shape, uh, even what he's done in the community, going out into the community and involving himself there, and we all know what Dwayne does. I, I just think those type of intangibles are so, so important you know, for this roster where we're at today with this roster. Patrick Benkowski, Sports Spotlight TV. John, for you. Uh, I wonder if you could compare this large roster change to any of the 80s Bulls teams you played on. Uh, not, not to this degree uh, where we've had so much turnover. Um, but, you know, when, when you have change and significant change, obviously the, the goal is to, to find, uh, you know, a group that can come together. And that takes time. I mean, it, it's, it's going to start. It's actually already started. I, Fred and his staff in this past month, just getting guys in there individually and, and working with them. Like I said, the vibe was really, really positive. So our guys have, have worked. And now it's the, the function of the staff and the players during this month, during training camp, uh, this is where you have to, to begin the process of growing. And I've always looked at you know, seasons in this way. You know, If you stay healthy, then you want to reach your potential. And we feel like you know, just given our, our roster, we, we, we've got some, some guys who have had success in this league at a high level. They know how to play. Um, and, and our young guys are going to have great opportunity this year. I mean, Nico, Miritic, uh, Doug McDermott, Denzel Valentine, these guys are going to get opportunity. And, and we're going to find out a lot about them. And uh, in a lot of ways, that will probably dictate, you know, how well we do. And we'll have more of Pax Gar in upcoming weeks. With a 30-year Southwest Side tradition, Huckfin is open 24 hours to serve you with great breakfasts like the Becky Thatcher, soups, great lunches, one-third pound burgers, clubs, and much more. Dinners from seafood to steaks to pasta, great donuts, and ice creams. With three locations at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero, stop in today. You know Huckfin is open. Go play at Red Shoes Billiards, 12009 South Pulaski in Austin, featuring 16 Brunswick Gold Crown pool tables, drop fluorescent lighting fixtures, and the fabulous grade of cloth. Call 708-388-3700. And now video gaming is available at Red Shoes from open till close. And don't forget, the Illinois Lottery 2. That's Red Shoe Billiards, 12009 South Pulaski. You've got to get to the sock live Bidkowski trivia, alternate Thursdays at 8 p.m. 93rd and Roberts Road. Great game, great people. Check out the sock. I think you'll be glad you did when you go to my trivia game every other Thursday. 8 p.m. 93rd and Roberts Road. Perfect pitch auto repair at 108th and Kedzie. Thus tune-ups, transmission, AC service, engine repair, tire repair, oil changes, and emission system repair. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and they've done a great job for me. Perfect Pitch Auto Repair at 108th and Kedzie. You've got to get to the Wise Owl. 
pizzas, pork sliders, Cuban, carrot soup, elote, burgers. My next trivia game, Monday, October 10th at 8 p.m. Great cocktails and bartenders at Van Buren and Racine. Nice parking lot. It's a great place. The Wise Owl. See ya over there. We're back on the spotlight, Should and uh, I don't care if you do or not. Okay. Uh, sometimes people in the media know each other, and uh, other people don't know that. Like my video editor, Gerard Grabowski. I, I had been editing with him for probably almost 20 years. But, but behind the scenes, he says about Benkowski, I don't know the man. Now, Kenny, he, he's appeared with me enough times on camera where he can't pretend not to know me. So, Kenny McReynolds is here again. Uh, the last time I had you on my show, you were throwing a pitch. Yeah, and I bounced it. Well, it, stuff happens. Well, but the, it was a new ball that slipped. Most, most people would like chances to try it. Yeah, well. So, you're, you're ahead of the curve on that. Thank you. So, we're about to talk about Todd Frazier. I like him as a ball player. Tell me your thoughts. Well, I tell you what, Pat. As we speak today, 39 home runs. You know, the batting average is not as high as you thought it would be, but I tell you what, he's been the best third baseman the White Sox have had since Robin Ventura. Yes, and he's, yes. he's done everything I think you could ask. The batting average may be a little higher, but 39 home runs, over 90 RBI. I hope he goes to 40 and 100. And stability on defense. Right. Oh, that, without question, stability that's, uh, on defense. I hope, they, I hope they keep him. You know, he's got, what, one year left yeah. on his contract? And when you don't win, I don't think there's any untouchable on a team that does not win. But that's one guy I hope they keep. He's a winner. He's a winner. And uh, he's got this 2017 season to beef up the average. But we talked to him about many of these things that Kenny and I just talked about. And uh, I think he understands that, that I'm a fan of his. We're back on the spotlight as we hit the air. It'll be October already. And uh, we're talking to a man who knows both leagues very well. And he's going to do a little handicapping for us. Uh, <laughs> let's start with the American League. Uh, you know, you've played the Indians pretty tough uh, of late. Uh, how do you think they're going to fare compared to teams like uh, Boston and uh, Texas? Um, you know, I'm big on, you know, have you been there before? Um, you know, teams that have been there before, uh, you know, the Indians, uh, I, think they'll, I think they'll be fine. I, I think uh, we'll see who they match up in the beginning there. We still have to decide who the wild card teams are. Boston's going to be tough. Uh, yeah, it's really up in the air right now because we don't we don't necessarily know who definitely is going to be in. If Detroit happens to sneak in there, uh, they're going to be, you know, a team to beat too as well. If the Indians have to play them, but uh, like I said, American League East uh, they have they have some fine teams going in, and uh, it might be an AL East uh, AL Central showdown. We'll see. Yeah, Boston probably going in the hottest. Yeah, they had they had that streak of ten or eleven, and. Yep. Uh, you know, you, nothing better than being hot going in. Yeah, and they got um, David Ortiz final season. I mean, you've seen crazier things happen, but, uh, you know, we don't, we don't know what those guys have in store up there for us yet. That's true. All right, let's switch over to the National League now, a team that you know. You, you battled them hard four times this year. Uh, the Cubs go in as the number one seed. Um, are they as good on paper or are they as good in October as they were when you played them? Yeah, I, I think so. I think they have all the tools, all the young guys, uh, and uh, a couple veteran guys uh, that can, uh, you know, lead them to, um, you know, winning that National League. I, I think, you know, if, if San Fran sneaks in there, they're a team that's been there before. Uh, can't ever count them out. Um, Bochy's pretty good manager. Yeah, yeah, both manage pretty good. And then St. Louis, who I fought with for five years, you know, back and forth. Uh, you just, you just, oh, man, it's just, it's just tough, you know, going into this. You know, final six games, uh, we'll see who's in, but, you know, I, I would give an edge to uh, Chicago there. Okay. And then uh, let's, let's digress completely off baseball for a second. Uh, I, I sometimes I see pools going around or, or a lot of people singing maybe college songs. Yeah. Who's uh, your favorite college team? Who's your favorite NFL team? Um, well, for me, I went to Rutgers, so I, I would say Rutgers is my favorite team. Uh, I'll cheer for Notre Dame or Ohio State, but... Uh, you know, I don't necessarily have a number one college football team. Uh, I just like I, I like the college game. You see a little more energy. Uh, you know, just like in college basketball too, as well. You know, compared to the NBA, uh, NFL team is off the. I'm kind of different. You know, everybody think I'd be a New Yorker guy, but I'm a Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan. I uh, I grew up loving watching. You know, the pewter orange jersey. So I I was born when Vinny Testaverde was a the quarterback there, and Eric Re that. Eric Red as the running back. Yeah. But um, I was a big Mike Allstott fan, and. Uh, 
you know, I have, I have a couple of his jerseys at home, and uh, they eventually won uh, the Super Bowl, I'm going to say, in 2003, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And they beat the Raiders, I think, 41-24. And, uh, you know, they had John Lynch, they had William Warren Sapp, uh, Derek Brooks, just to name a couple guys. And, uh, uh, yeah, I've just been with them ever since, so i got to stick with them. Yeah, that's, I don't run into a lot of Tampa Bay <laughs> fans unless they're from Florida. Yeah, exactly. But uh, they did have a great defensive legacy. Yes. And now they got uh, a very new, a slight quarterback. Yeah, with well, Jameis, uh, he's doing pretty good. You know, we have to find a way to win those those games. Like last week, uh, we lost to, uh, or we, they lost to uh, the Rams 37-32. And, uh, you know, that's, the, that's just the difference, you know, kind of like we did. We have to find a way to win those games and, uh, you know, find a way to win late because that's, uh, those ball games come up at the end and maybe get a squeak in and get a wild card spot. Defenses. And that's Todd Frazier. We'll have more of him upcoming here on the Spotlight. You've got to get the Jacks. 33-25, Ridge Road in Lansing. Trivia every Tuesday at 7 p.m. A very intense competitive game. Any of half a dozen teams can win. My game show at Oliver's gets better and better at 6100 West 159th Street in Oak Forest. Live trivia, alternate Thursdays at 7 p.m. Have great food, great drink, and great trivia at Oliver's. Perfect pitch auto repair at what 108th and Kedzie is great. Tune-ups, transmissions, AC service, engine repair, tire repair, oil changes. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. They do a great job for me, and they'll do a great job for you. They're quick, and they don't charge an arm and a leg. Perfect pitch auto repair, 108th and Kedzie. Trivia will be at the Sock. Alternate Thursdays at 8 p.m. 93rd and Roberts Road, great food, great drink, great people. Everything great. You've got to get the Del Sur Mexican restaurant open for lunch and dinner daily. Shrimp, tilapia, salmon, steak, chicken dishes, you name it. It's all there at 46th and Halsted. Great stuff at Del Sur Mexican restaurant. Reggie's is a great place with tons of music, interesting people and staff, great food and drink at 21st and State. And amongst the cool things they have, Benkowski Trivia. All shows are now Monday at 6 p.m. Reggie's, 21st and State, a fun place. So at Bulls Media Day, I caught up with Dwayne Wade, the big name Bull. Dwayne, recall the first time you ever thought that you could be on the Bulls? Where there uh, was playing the driveway somewhere? Below. Yeah. T talk about that. Um, 1991. When the Bulls won their first championship, I was like, oh, yeah, I can do that. I could be over there with those guys. And I went right into my backyard and rain, sleet, or snow, it didn't matter, to uh, try to, you know, emulate or imitate, um, you know, the things that my favorite players was doing. So, you know, that's when my, at nine years old, that's when my vision started to, um, to not only play in the NBA, but, you know, to play with the Bulls one day. Thank you, Dwayne, and we'll have more of Mr. Wade and Rondo and other new Bulls in upcoming weeks. Good day. This week's show is brought to you by the Perfect Pitch Auto Repair Shop at 108th and Kedzie. Get all your car work done there like me. The Lansing Floral Shop is the place to go for all your floral needs. Call 708-474-1212. Huck Finn, a great wide-ranging menu, along with donuts and ice cream. Open 24 hours at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 100... Imprint Graphics, leaders in booklet, perfect bound saddle stitch. Very competitive pricing, 708-396-1010.